I'm John Carmichael with the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council, and I'll provide a brief presentation on the CDR 28 benchmark assessment for the South Atlantic Cobia stock. First, a bit of background on CDAR itself. CDAR is a process used in the Southeast to prepare stock assessments. Um, it stands for the Southeast Data Assessment and Review, and that reflects the three main steps of the process which are used in benchmark stock assessments. The first step is the data stage. At this point, a wide range of experts come together, including state agency and university researchers, data collectors and analysts, fishery scientists, as well as representatives of the Council's Scientific and Statistical Committee and its advisory panels and other interested fishermen. At the data stage, information on the stock is reviewed and compiled and evaluated develop the time series of information that's necessary to prepare the stock assessment models. The next step in the process is the assessment stage. At this point, the various pieces of data are put together in assessment models, and in the case of a benchmark assessment, several models are going to be considered. And through this stage, those models are prepared, they're developed, they're refined <clears throat> to develop the estimates of population status that is necessary for the council to manage its fisheries. Participants at the data stage include the stock assessment analysts, who are typically going to be employees of the National Marine Fishery Service, Southeast Fishery Science Center, and they are advised by representatives of the Council's SSC, as well as the fishermen who are appointed as observers to the process. The final step is an independent peer review, and the peer review consists of a panel chaired by an SSC representative, including several other members of the SSC, and then independent experts provided by the Center for Independent Experts who are outside independent scientists who are not involved in the stock assessment and bring high-level analytical skills and ability to review very complex models into the review process. And they will review the information that was provided through the prior two stages and give their opinion of the stock assessment itself, comment on the uncertainties and the quality of the information that's contained. CDAR is an open and transparent process. It's run through the council system, and like all council meetings, they are public and anyone can attend. The program also includes extensive documentation, all of which is available on the CDAR website. This includes, of course, the final stock assessment report, and it also includes various working papers and documentation that was prepared, reference materials that were provided to all the participants throughout the process of the data assessment and review. The Ultimate product that comes out of the CDAR process is an overall assessment report. It includes a data section, an assessment stage section, and an independent peer review section. Those are available on the CDAR website as well. Uh, so importantly, CDAR does not provide management advice that's developed by the council. CDAR provides information on the status of the stock, which then affects what the council does as management. The participants for CDAR largely appointed by the council are the representatives of the, state, the federal agencies such as the Southeast Fishery Science Center who are actually conducting much of the assessment analytical work. CDAR addresses needs for the entire Southeast region. So it includes the South Atlantic Council as well as the Gulf and Caribbean Councils, the National Marine Fisheries HMS Division by its efforts on coastal sharks, and the Atlantic States and Gulf States Marine Fisheries Commission. The CDAR 28 assessment of COBIA was completed in January 2013. It was a benchmark assessment. In this case, it was the first assessment that was done. And by being a benchmark, it means that all information and all data is up for review and consideration, and a variety of models are considered to define and decide which models are best for the data which are at hand. The terminal year of that information was 2011. And this is very important because this determines the point at which status was able to be estimated by the model. The assessment approach, which is ultimately selected by the group, was the is called the Beaufort Assessment Model. This is a basic statistical catch at age model formulated by the Southeast Fisheries Science Center scientist in Beaufort, North Carolina, to address the assessment needs and respond to the data situation that exists in the South Atlantic. This assessment was reviewed by the South Atlantic Scientific and Statistical Committee in April 2013. And as I mentioned, there's extensive documentation of this process on the CDAR website, and that can be found at the address www.cdarweb.org backslash CDAR28. 
And once you go to the basic CDAR website, there are various links to direct you to each individual CDAR project, allows you to search by species and what have you. One of the first steps in developing a stock assessment is to decide exactly what the range of the stock is which the assessment will consider. Um, COBE are found throughout the South Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, and this was the first extensive evaluation of the stock structure for COBE. And through genetic work and other information, it was identified that there were two separate stocks of COBE found within the southeast, and there's a South Atlantic stock identified as occurring from Georgia to New York. Now, a lot of this was based on genetic information and as is often the case in such situations, there's not a clear break and certainly seldom a clear break, which lines up to things such as state boundaries or council boundaries. <clears throat> in this case, there was a break identified somewhere between St. Lucie, Florida and Port Royal Sound, South Carolina. And based on the information at hand, the group at the data workshop recommended drawing the line at the Georgia-Florida border. This was also supported by tag recapture data, suggested se separate stocks overlapping around Brevard County, Florida. And of course, there's always exceptions and there are some fish which may be tagged in the Atlantic and make their way into the Gulf and vice versa. Nonetheless, this was the stock that was defined and it was ex accepted by the review panel as being an appropriate definition given the information which was available at that time. <coughs> the data sources included in this assessment included commercial landings and discards, recreational landings and discards, as well as length and age composition from those fisheries. Length and age data are also used to develop things such as growth model, which can help describe the population better in the model. The only indices of abundance available for cobia were based on fishery dependent information from the headboat survey, which is a survey of headboat operations in the southeast, and the South Carolina for hire logbook survey, which is a logbook developed by the state of South Carolina that addresses their charter boat fishermen. <coughs> Landings in the assessment go back into the 1950s for the commercial fishery and extrapolated back um, into the mid 50s for the recreational fishery. And then you have your data series come on in the early 70s with the headboat survey and then again in the 1981 when the MREP survey comes in. In general, landings were assumed to be low, estimated to be low back in from the 50s through the early 80s. And then there's a fairly rapid increase in landings up to the mid 2000s um, with peaks occurring oh, around 1986 and then again around 2006. And then the slight decline in landings through the terminal year of 2011 thereafter. Overall, as can be seen, this is predominantly a recreational fishery with the recreational landings far exceeding those of the commercial fishery. As I said, the terminal year was 2011, so this determines the point at which stock status is defined. In the case of this stock, um, we're interested in whether or not the stock is overfished or not overfishing. Um, and for overfished, we compare the level of spawning stock biomass to the level based on the minimum stock size threshold defined by the council. So for the case of evaluating whether or not the stock is overfished is the top figure. And that shows here in 2011, the estimate was that the spawning stock biomass was above the level of the MSST, which is represented by the horizontal line. So the conclusion was the stock is not overfished. In the lower panel, we see the fishing mortality rate. And this is reference to the fishing mortality rate that provides the maximum sustainable yield denoted by FMSY, and the horizontal dark line represents one, and fishing mortality rate should be below that, which provides fishing mortality rate at MSY. And we can see in this figure that <clears throat> the point estimates through the entire time series were below the FMSY level. The stock had not experienced any overfishing, and it was not experiencing overfishing in 2011, as evidenced by the, line, the point estimate being well below the FMSY value. Now, it is interesting to note, however, that there were some instances in recent years where the stock came very close to experiencing overfishing, and also that the general biomass trend in the population has been declining since the 